Hi guys, so in part two on this Mitsubishi GTO repaint, we're going to move in through the clear coat stage. Now, the spray gun that we're using again is the Fuji MPV8. I'm using a 1.2mm setup in this. We'll be running this at full fan, two bar on the air pressure, and I believe the first coat was around about two and a half turns out, and the second coat was three turns out. Now, I'm using the Capsi 6030 HS clear, and I'm running no reducer or, you know, no reducer, thinner, um, depending on where you're from, in this clear. I want this to be a really nice heavy coat, because my plan for polishing this is to do a 1500 dry, a foam 2000, 3000, and then a wool compound, and then finish with a DA um, for swirl removal. So I want a nice depth of clear there, and I want to be able to rip this right back and take it back so there's no peel left in this whatsoever. Now, you have to excuse the fact if my voice is a bit groggy at the moment, I'm full of the flu, um, but I've not been able to sleep this week, so I've been up doing a lot of editing, so you just have to excuse the bit of a groggy voice this week. Now, the same as in the last video, I will leave a link to the spray gun um, and also the clear coat for you. And don't forget, there is an offer on these guns at the moment that if you use um, the code that's down in the description, then you can get one of the free analog gauges along with the Fuji MPV8. Now, the same as for the base coat, I'm running the SAR RPS cups. Um, definitely a fan of these, and as I said in the last video, I will do a bit of a short video um, so you can see the system, um, and I'll try and explain a little bit more about why we switched over to it. So, one thing that I will say recently is I've been experimenting a lot more with my overlap as far as clear goes. Um, so rather than adding a lot more fluid on through the fluid tip, what I've been doing is I've been shrinking the overlap down. So I've been overlapping more um, just to see how it alters my finish, you know, how wet I can get it to lay up, that sort of thing. Um, on this one, um, we ended up with sort of quite a flat but thick peel um, if that makes sense. Something that's got a lot of depth to it in the body of the build of the clear coat, but it was also extremely fast um, to run the 1500 dry disc over just to literally knock the top off to make it ultra flat. So this first coat, I'm not going too heavy on this. I'm just trying to make sure that everything's fully covered. Now, um, the... If you're not putting reducer in this, I'd say it does take quite a little bit longer to flow out. Um, they do recommend, I think it's five to 10% reducer in the 6030, um, just because of the kind of finish that we're putting on this. Um, I wasn't sort of aiming for like the most amazing gun finish. Um, still nice, still nice and you know quite a thick peel. Something that's easily polishable. Um, with plenty of body to it, like I said, I want that build to the clear coat. Um, but I'm not going for like an all out off the gun finish that I can just dean and polish because our plan was to polish the whole car. Um, especially with it being this like dark pearl grey slash black colour. Um, I think doing one of these in a real mirror finish really does set the car off at the end of it and give it that sort of. I don't know, that extra extra level and extra depth, especially on a dark coloured car. Um, on light coloured cars, you don't really tend to notice the peel so much. But on the darker cars, obviously, there's a lot more reflection there, so you do. So you can see there, it's not going on the smoothest when it's first coming out of the gun. But after, I'd probably say about 20-30 seconds, with this being neat, um, rather than having any reducer in it, it does flow out quite nicely and quite flat as well. Um, for some reason, um, the roof and the very back of the tailgate or boot, if you're here in the UK, um, did have a couple of large nibs in it, um, which is something that we haven't had in quite some time because we've got new filters in. Um, I don't know whether it's just come from like one of the window gaps or something that maybe didn't blow out properly, but once it was all flat and polished, it wasn't an issue. So, on any of the repaint work that we do, um, we always give them a full flat and polish. I think if you're having a car repainted, 
Um, especially something like this where it's having a full hit, it's a tidy up or it's going to be a show car or something like that. Then I think going down the full flat finish route rather than having like, you know, leaving orange peel in it is a much better way of doing it. Um, just because, it, again, it just sets it off that little bit extra. And even on a car this size, um, for the full car, including the doors and a lot of the small panels, which I did as well, you were talking it was probably just over a day's labour um, to give this a full flat and polish. But then since doing this, quite a few customers have come in and seen this. And as soon as they kind of see this, like the standard that you're doing them to, um, they're then obviously very instantly keen to look at getting theirs booked in as well. So to do them to this sort of standard, it does appeal to you know the customers that are walking through the door as well that can see the kind of work um, and the kind of quality and the standards that you're putting out. And obviously, if it was an everyday car, um, it was a normal accident repair, we wouldn't be mirror finishing it. Um, but it is kind of like our staple on all repaint work that we do mirror finish them. So you can see here, as I'm going on there, I'm putting it down really quite wet. Um, I'm, I think, I'm pretty sure I was running three turns out um, on the fluid, not two and a half. Um, I can't off the top of my head quite remember. But I have found recently that just tightening my overlap up, especially on the second coat, um, just gives me that much wetter finish and a much smoother finish as well, as opposed to doing it 50-50 and probably going more like 70%. I don't know why, maybe because like my head's a bit busy with everything that's going on in life at the moment. Like with stuff with um, at home and with my mum and at work and stuff like that. I think it's just like when I'm getting in the booth at the moment, I'm spending that little bit of extra time because it's kind of like my chill out time. It's kind of like my little bit of peace in the week is to get in the booth and smash out, you know, a nice repaint like this or a nice coat of clear. So I've just kind of been experimenting with my settings, with my overlaps, even with my air pressure a little bit. I found, um, I think it was today, actually, as I'm voicing over this video, that if I dropped the pressure down to like 1.8 instead of 2, I just found that it laid this clear just that little touch flatter, um, which is a bit strange, because normally I'd be pretty much a stickler for having it at 2 bar, but you know, when I put it down to a 1.8, it just seemed to lay that coat of clear down that tiny bit nicer and um, so if one of you guys have got one of these guns give it a go at two bar like you normally would but also just give it a little tweak and just try it at 1.8 and see how you find it um i am running it at full fan um i've heard a few people saying that they do turn the fan in a bit because the fan's a bit too big i tend to paint quite close so i don't find the fan too big obviously the further away the gun's going to be the larger that fan will be as well so I tend to paint a little bit closer so I don't find it too big. But I found, especially with this Fuji, if I keep it nice and close and then I give it a real nice tight overlap, that I do get a much nicer finish, um, especially when I'm doing stuff like this and I want it like that roof that I want it really wet it up, um, then I do find that getting in nice and close, getting a nice tight overlap and also just taking it steady, and really concentrating on your technique. So making sure you're hitting them overlaps all the time. Making sure that that distance is staying the same. Keeping that speed nice and controlled. Because I get some people that say, oh, you know, like, I paint quite slow. Um, some people say, it's not that I paint slow. It's just that I turn, I dial things back. So I can sort of take my time. I can enjoy it. And most of all, I can really concentrate on putting the clear on a panel where I want it. I don't want the gun running that fast that I'm running around the job at the end of it and thinking, you know, going in the back room to wash my gun out and thinking, I hope that doesn't run. I would rather slow things down, take my time, because if you're getting runs and sags and issues like that, you know, it's you that sets the gun up. You're deciding the air pressure. You're deciding how much fluid. You're deciding how close or far away you're going. And you can see the reflection off that first coat is already really nice anyway. So why not just dial things back a little bit, slow things down, take that 
touch more time in the booth um, and enjoy what you're doing as well. Um, I love painting, I love getting in the booth and knocking out a nice repaint like this and smashing down a really nice coat of clear. So if this coat takes me two or three minutes longer than another painter, I've got to be honest, I'm not really bothered. Um, I would rather take my time, enjoy my do job, um, enjoy knocking out that coat of clear, but also know that when I finished it, that I'm, you know, I'm probably going to be 95 to 99 percent certain that I'm not going to be having to deal with runs or sags in this job because I've taken my time. So rather than putting this thing on like full fluid, um, sticking a 1.3 in it and absolutely lobbing clear out as fast as I can, it's just a case of taking my time, getting the that overlap consistent. Um, and just really enjoying the job. Um, I know a lot of you guys that watch the channel um, are DIYers. Um, not all of you, but a lot of you guys, you know, <clears throat> that are watching kind of like where I was when I started. Um, and we'd all sort of call ourselves a Fred in a shed. Or as I would call myself these days, like a Fred, but just in a bigger posh shed. Um, and it's enjoying it you know like when you get that nice coat of clear for me it doesn't matter if it's like now 20 years into painting or whether it was when i started um that first job that i did that i really smashed out a really nice job was probably the one that i spent not the most time on but that i slowed down on to focus on what i was doing rather than thinking oh you know i've got to get this done i've got to get it out and just trying to rush it I really sort of slowed down, took my time and put a lot of effort into it rather than just trying to get as much paint on as you can. Um, it's one thing that like on training days and stuff, we try and teach people. So we will wind the spray gun quite back so it's quite reserved um, because some guys are a bit worried about getting runs and sags and things like that. At the end of the day, you don't need to absolutely hammer the paint on to get a really nice finish. It's more your technique and how you're spraying it. And, you know, obviously <clears throat> some of it is in the products and obviously your spray gun, but a lot of it comes down to technique. So if your technique's off or you're rushing things or you're moving too fast, then, you know, things just kind of go a bit haywire sometimes. So I guess that's kind of like my rant um, about clear coat in a car. Um, and my approach to it as well. Um, I do like to take my time um, with stuff like this. Um, I, I enjoy my booth time more than anything. Um, we spend so much time prepping cars. You know, we can put weeks and weeks and weeks into a car, but only then put one day in the booth. So, you know, I'd rather take my time on that one day um, after all them weeks of prep and make the paint as nice as all the prep work that we've put in before it. Now part three on this, um, I'll have up next week, which will probably just be finishing off a few little bits of paint on some of the panels, and then we'll have a little bit of a walk around video on the car as well, just to finish things off um, once it's all been fully rebuilt and I've edited all that up. Then, I'm not sure what we're gonna be moving on till then, but I'm sure you'll find out in the very near future. Um, I'll probably mention that in next week's video. If I can, I'll try and get the TVR series, um, the final editing on that finished up. Um, I know that's been a bit of a long time coming, but I've just had a hell of a lot on recently. Um, especially work-wise, work is very, very tough at the moment. Um, physically and financially, we're going to take time off as well. But, you know, hopefully we'll get back on track there very soon. I want to thank... All you guys that have come back, because I know I've taken a bit of time off and watched these videos. And I also thank all the channel members and everybody. Um, you guys have always been the sort of heart and soul of the channel. So I do appreciate all you guys that have been leaving messages um, and comments and everything else um, on the channel. As always, I am trying to get back to as many of you as I can at the moment. Um, it's just my time is very limited um, at the moment. Also, if you are enjoying this sort of content that we're putting out at the moment, um, 
leave a little comment down below. If you're not subscribed as well, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell to be notified of when there's new uploads at the moment. I mean, this one will be up the usual Friday night slot like it we used to be. Um, but I can't promise at the moment that everything will be up on the usual sort of Friday night slots. So if you hit the bell um, to be notified of when there's a new upload, then you'll be sure not to miss out on anything um, that I might post during the week. Um, so no part one to this, we dropped sort of midweek because um, it just happened to be when it was all done and edited. I wanted to try and get it up for the Sunday, but I was just having a few issues over the weekend and a lot to do over the weekend, so I didn't get a chance. But then I thought, right, well, bear in mind, we got it done at the start of the week, then we might as well crack this up at the start of the week for you guys. But those are both free, so if you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment, um, and don't forget to hit the bell to be notified of when something new comes along. So that's going to be it for this video for me guys. Um, I'm going to get this uploaded and then get into bed because I am absolutely beat. And it's like half two, three o'clock in the morning. And yep, yeah, that's it for me for this week guys. And I will see you again soon. Bye for now. It's the calm before the storm Things aren't as they were before You best start bracing Did you think you could keep us out? Shut the gates, forget us now It's hard to change it Us now, we're not back in time to what we're doing. Things are about to change, it's evolution. Once you shake the ground, you feel it moving. We have the revolution. Can you hear the sound? Grow.